Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ryan Sims from CG Hacks and today we're going to be talking about frequency separation and how you can use it as a powerful tool in the world of retouching. See you in Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. We've got our wonderful image of our model Emma, and we're gonna be retouching this image today and breaking down frequency separation. So the main thing that we're gonna to wanna to do first is we're gonna to want to duplicate our layer twice. So I'm gonna head over to Control J and duplicate our layer twice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rename these two layers. I'm gonna rename this first one, our high layer or our textures layer and that's going to consist of our skin details pores things like that and now i'm going to rename this lower layer as you guessed it low and that's going to be more for our tones and transitions you could even call it color but i'm just going to leave it right there basically what we're doing is we're breaking down this image into two layers right we're going to have all of our skin details here on the high and all of our tonal transitions here on the low. So let me break down what that means. Let's go ahead and click this eyeball right here, take off the high texture layer, and just have the low selected. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. We're gonna look at the skin detail, and we just kind of wanna blur it just enough to where we don't see that detail, right? So let's go ahead and head up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and you can start at zero if you want and just kind of like build your way up we don't want to blur the details too much just enough to where they're not very visible i normally kind of put it right there at six i think that's probably a good foundation if you want to start it right there at five that's good too so we'll just go ahead and hit okay and so you can still see that there's some detail there but the actual detail has been blurred out and now we're going to go back up to our high layer click it back on i'm going to zoom out for a second and what we're going to do to this layer is we're going to basically we're going to run a filter on it that takes the info of this layer and subtracts it out of this layer and leaves us with the difference. So with this layer selected, I'm going to head up to image, apply image, and I'm going to make sure that this layer is selected on the low tones layer. So once we've got that selected, everything else should be good. You want the blending mode on subtract scale on two offset 128 that should be what it is by default and then hit okay and what you see here if you zoom in you got this gray layer that has just the details on it and now we don't want it to stay gray obviously we want to change that so we're going to go over to our blending mode and we're going to change that to linear light and so basically what we've done is if i hold the alt key down and click on this little eyeball there is our details layer and hold the alt key down again and click on this eyeball that is our low tones and color transition layer and then of course we have our original down here at the bottom so i'm going to turn all these back on i'm actually going to take these two layers hit Control g group them together double click and i'm just going to rename that cg hacks frequency separation there we go and so now we've got all of those layers in one grouping so the first thing i normally like to do is i like to start with the low level first and then start working on the high detail layer so let's go ahead and select the low layer and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of blur out some of the details i want to show you two different ways to do this the first one is using the lasso tool we're just going to grab this lasso tool right here maybe feather the radius by 25 pixels or whatever gives you a good feathered radius and so I'm just going to kind of circle right in this little area that you see all these little details right here and I can do it one of several ways I can either go up to filter and just re-add that six percent blur that we did before by hitting the hotkey alt control f I can do it that way or I can just go up to filter blur gaussian blur and then kind of play with this slider now you don't want to do it too much because if you do it too much then you're obviously really kind of messing up the skin there you just want it to be kind of a subtle effect and that's normally why i just reapply that same six percent blur by you know hitting alt control f so might do it again just to kind of see maybe select some of these little areas right here a little bit more wider you can see all these little divots in the skin we're just going to reapply that blur things like that really simple maybe right there not too complicated right and it's just a real subtle but quick way to kind of blur those little tiny micro transitions 
in the skin. So let's zoom out just a little bit and just kind of see the difference. This was before, this is after, before, after. You can see it's just a little tiny difference where before you can see a little bit more of these like little inconsistencies in the skin and in the details. When we turn it back on, it's just a little bit smoother, right? Now you do still have some details that are gonna need to be retouched out. And that's what our high detail layer is for. So I'm gonna go ahead, click on my high detail layer, and maybe we'll just start right over here. I'm gonna hit the S hot key, which is gonna bring up our clone stamp brush right here. And I'm gonna right click, just kind of mess with my settings, keep my brush size pretty low. And I'm going to hold the Alt key down and sample from good areas of skin, like right up here, and paint over the unwanted areas like that and then just kind of work my way around the image doing the same thing. These little areas right up here, if I want to paint those out, I'll just sample from good areas of skin and paint those little areas out. Now, if you notice, I'm sampling from different areas each time. I'm not trying to do the same area because if you notice in the skin pattern, the skin right here in the eye is different from say this area over here in the nose. So it wouldn't make sense if I sampled over here and then started painting on the nose. You can see that just looks odd, right? You want to sample from roughly the same area. So if I wanted to get rid of this little white spot here, I would sample close by and then just kind of paint over it like that. Real practical information, just kind of sampling from certain areas. And it's really up to you how far you want to go with this, right? You can do as much, or as little as you want. If you want to take out these lines, you can just sample from the good area of skin. Maybe paint out the line like so, and so on and so forth. And you normally just want to grab some of the areas that are just a little bit more noticeable. You don't have to do every single spot. Remember, skin detail is important. It's one of the key factors in making your image look realistic. So you don't want to blur out all the skin details or get rid of them because that is what makes your image look more genuine, more realistic, and makes you look more like a good retoucher because you didn't take out all of the detail. You left some of it in. So another cool way to smooth out transitions, before, remember, we used the lasso tool and circled certain areas and applied the Gaussian blur. This time, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the mixer brush. So I'm going to head over to my brush tool and go down to mixer brush. And normally what I like to do is I like to go up to this little drop down area, hit clean brush. And these are normally my settings for the mixer brush. Everything's at 50 except for flow. That's usually around 5% or so. And I'm going to deselect this high layer make sure it's turned off so you can kind of see what you're doing on the low layer. And it works very similar to the clone stamp tool. You can hold the alt key and select good areas that you want to, maybe I want to bring this highlighted color more in this area and kind of blend or mix some of these colors together. That's what the mixing brush does. It's kind of like a wet paint brush, kind of mixes those colors together a little bit and allows you to have a little bit more of a creative blend into this area that can kind of really smooth out this highlight and at the same time get rid of the eye bags and as you can tell just from smoothing out those tones and the transitions of the low layer you can see that the eye bags have already kind of disappeared when i add the high detail skin layer back in this is before this is after and if you zoom in even more all the skin detail is still there from the high layer we didn't retouch any of that out it's just the fact that we smoothed out the eye bags from underneath the skin detail that allows us to have a lot more of a realistic and smooth look with the skin retouching. And that is high frequency separation in a nutshell. I prefer to use that technique whenever I'm doing skin retouching simply because it's a non-destructive way of retouching skin. You've got destructive and non-destructive. Um, destructive basically just means that you're working on the image itself. Uh, remember at the beginning we made duplicates. We made like the, the low layer and the high layer and we were working based off of those and we could always click it on and off to see the before and after. If you're just working on the base image, you're actually destroying the pixels of the original image. And so you kind of have nothing to go back to because you've kind of painted and ruined the original. And so it's just nice to be able to work in those layers. And plus you just have more control when you're smoothing out the highlights and shadows of the skin, especially like in the cheek, nose, 
forehead, areas like that, you have a little bit more fluidness to have that freedom to paint away the eye bags or to blur out certain skin divots and things like that. And then when you turn on the high or the detail layer, you can then start taking away blemishes, pimples, things like that. They're going to be a little bit more obvious because they're on the detail layer that you're not going to be able to get rid of on the low layer. So I hope you found this video informative and educational. Consider hitting the like and the subscribe button if you'd like to have more content like this. And if you don't feel like following all those steps, I went ahead and created a free action for you that you can download for free in the link in the description below. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to teach you an even quicker way to retouch, maybe a little bit of a cheat way to retouch. Should be fun. So hope to see you all in the next video. And remember until next time, create more, say less and stay creative.